Thank you for joining this uh, webinar, the, an open air um, webinar uh, regarding one of the services that we um, have just put in production last um, two weeks ago, so early October. So I think uh, lots of you are aware that you, we are, are working on this dashboard since last year. We did um, uh, a better version. We have uh, tested this uh, with different repository managers and we did uh, a last phase of tests with um, the Portuguese, within the Portuguese network of repository managers and the Spanish network of repository managers. And uh, uh, finally, we have this service in production to, to be used for all the, the, the open air uh, content providers. Um, so I will try to, uh, so we will have mainly three parts. So I will uh, present the dashboard with some highlights from the functionalities, the main functionalities that we have in the dashboard. I will then highlight, um, I will then highlight uh, uh, some novelties, three novelties that we have uh, in, in terms of services of open air. So the, um, the dashboard uh, provides different services for uh, um, that. In fact, we have already uh, working in open air, but uh, we have some novelties and we that are integrated in this dashboard. So I will highlight three, and then at the end I will demo. And of course, during these three parts, you can you can put your questions. You can put in your questions here in the chat. My colleague Andre Vieira. Uh, may be uh, able to answer some of your questions during my presentation, but if not, uh, we will have time to address all, the, all your questions uh, at the, uh, during the demo or at the end of the of the of the demo. Um, so uh, the dashboard um, uh, is one of the the open air services that we are delivering from uh, as um, added value services from our. Um, information space from our infra infrastructure so the 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 open air infrastructure is powerful in terms of um, the the graph and in terms of the services that we can provide and uh, we have different uh, services different tools available for different uh, for different um, uh, researchers uh, for different stakeholders um, and um, I'm just turning off my mobile phone, sorry. Uh, and um, uh, we have different tools available also for repository managers. So the, the guidelines, the open access broker, um, the validator, so tools already in production that we are now integrated in this provide service, open air provide services, the, the dashboard for, um, for repository managers and other managers and data archive managers, uh, uh, publishers, um, aggregator managers. The main functionalities that we have now available are uh, addressing the repository manager's needs, but um, in the coming future, we will have also other, we will address our the, the needs of other content providers managers. So we have now different kinds of services for research communities in Connect, for funders in Monitor, for third parties, innovators in, in Develop, uh, and uh, for all our stakeholders and for specifically for researchers also in Explore and for repository managers in, in Provide. And we will highlight the dashboard for content provider that is available in provide.openair.eu where we have, we have all the services available and we can say that this services is one stop shop for uh, for uh, for um, all the open air content providers where they can validate registered uh, access to um, to content enrichments as access to metrics monitor the uh, the aggregation process, um, etc. Uh, so this is the um, the screenshot of the the home page of the the dashboard, um, where we have some basic information, some basic figures also from 
from our information space, but then people need to sign in to check uh, the information of uh, your specific uh, repository. So we can say that all the services uh, available in this in dash dashboard are uh, private uh, services available for each uh, specific um, manager of the content uh, provider. So now uh, some highlights, um, some highlights regarding the, the, the dashboard. So um, the highlights that in fact we have available in the, in the home page. So the validation, the registration, the enrichment and the, and the metrics. Um, so um, in, in the area that we highlight the, the, the validation tools, is where we have the the um, the validation um, the validator uh, tool or that we have already available in production, but now is integrated in this dashboard, uh, so people can validate uh, their repository against the, the open air guidelines. We provide also the links for the open air guidelines, and um, people can test the compliance of the, the, the content provider um, directly here in the, these different tools because we are uh, talking about uh, the interoperability um, with open air guidelines and with different uh, um, uh, metadata needs. Uh, then we have a, a, an important um, area and functionalities for the registration so people can register it. Uh, it's important to say that now you can also update information. Uh, this is something that is really uh, now better in this dashboard if we compare with um, the functionalities available in the previous validator service. Now you can change and you can change almost all information that you have in in your repository if you want to change the logo uh, because uh, sometimes the logo change so you can do it directly and in this um, editing your registration and uh, it will appear automatically in your in your in open air different uh, services in explore when we we show the, the content providers when we list the content providers or of course in, in directly in your in your area uh, so this is uh, something relevant uh, for you you can also of course uh, update the OA APMH interface. If you want to 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 apply a new interface to Open Air, you you can do it directly here in this in this area. So you have an area where you update uh, information of your content provider and when where you update the the OAI interface. Then uh, uh, the new um, area that we have in terms of services is uh, the part related with. Um, uh, content events. Um, we expect to have alerts, also metadata alerts in the future. Um, we are almost there in terms of uh, in terms of developments uh, in our infrastructure, also to provide these alerts. But currently, we only have enrichments, so we want to have the kind of events, alerts, and enrichments. And we now have already the, all the events generated for content enrichments for different types of um, content en enrichments. So more metadata that you already have, but we can suggest you more or missing. So something that you don't have in your records and that OpenAir uh, found uh, useful for you um, from other uh, content providers, from the process of the duplication, and um, inference that we we have in our infrastructure, and we so things like um, missing open access versions. Uh, you have um, a restricted uh, open access version in your record, and we have an open access version from other content provider who can provide you that information. Missing PIDs, um, uh, links to projects to to. Um, to fund their projects, uh, abstracts, etc. So I will show you in the demo all the, um, the possibilities of events, uh, of enrichments that we have for you in more and missing uh, parts. And then the last uh, highlight here is about the, the metrics part. So we have now user statistics, so some information for you about um, 
So um, specific user statistics from your data source and from each public publication. So if you uh, enable the metrics service, uh, you will get some user statistics from your data source and automatically um, in the explore service of open air, the statistics of each publication will also appear in the in the landing page of that publication. So the downloads and views will appear publicly available in the in the explore service and um, the you will get some some private statistics for you um, uh, specifically about your data data source. So these are the the four main highlights from the four main areas of the the dashboard. Um, and now I will I will present you the um, the novelties. Vai me dizendo o tempo também. So uh, novelties I will highlight three. So the first one uh, is is about the. Um, the, the enrichment. So this is something that we have new. So the the previous slide, so this slide is the um, the, the dashboard, uh, the different areas of the dashboard. So we have sources, compatibility, content, and metrics. And in the um, in the content area, in the content menu, you will find the enrichments. So this is something that uh, is really uh, new. Uh, is a result um, of the, um, the open air broker service. Uh, we can say that the open air broker service is the, the most important services, service here, but the, the, the broker service is a, let's say, an invisible service, is a backhand, uh, backhand service, and we show all the results of the, the these services, of this service here in the, in the, in the dashboard. So, um, based on our infrastructure, so the broker services use all the process, the information process that we have uh, in our infrastructure. So the validation, the cleaning, the, the duplication, the enrichment by inference. Then we create this, let's say, European crease of information. And uh, the idea, the main idea of this broker is that uh, we may, um, so we are able to collect um, uh, Enrichments, uh, so with extra metadata, uh, new records, um, alerts, etc., that be, will be of potential interest of repository managers. So, based on this idea, uh, we have uh, we have provided uh, this, we have built this open air broker service that um, works like uh, like this in this. Uh, sketch that I am I'm showing. So um, we have our um, open air information space graph where we do all the, um, the different processes. Uh, we identify events um, currently only enrichments in the future, uh, so additions and, and alerts. So new records for your repository. So we may find, uh, so just to, to, to share with you what we are preparing for the future. So we may find um, publications from um, an author that usually, based on our infrastructure, uh, deposit in your repository. So we think that maybe this record will be um, useful for your repository and we send, you, send to you this notification that uh, someone that usually deposit in your repository have a publication in open air that is it's not in your repository and maybe you you want to have it so this is the kind of additions that we want to provide but now we have the enrichment so we send the enrichment um, so via this uh, the notification broker services and uh, all the events are available in the dashboard and are available for you also to subscribe to subscribe specific events or to subscribe filtered events that I will show in the in the demo. So this is uh, in one minute the way the um, the broker uh, works. So and uh, these are the the results of the broker are available now in this content um, enrichments that we have available in the dashboard. Then the last menu of the dashboard is the metrics part is one of the novelties that we also want to highlight. 
So in the last two years, so 2016 and 2017, during the Open Air 2020 project, we ran a pilot on user statistics. So we did um, several developments in terms of um, uh, that service, in terms of the um, an, anal an analytic serv service, uh, a tracker code to track the, the downloads and the views, plugins for reprints and this space. And uh, we are now in conditions to put these services in production. In production, so we did all these developments within uh, some pilots, with um, mainly with Portuguese repositories, but also with some repositories from France, Croatia, and Spain. And we we have now this in production. So we have few number of repositories already involved in using this metric service. But what we want to achieve is that. Um, all of our um, compliant, compatible repositories use this um, service. Um, this is one of, 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 the, of the novelties and the way that people can join this uh, Open Air User Statistics Services is directly in the dashboard they can enable the user's metrics service. Uh, directly in the dashboard they will receive some instructions what to do next. So they need, they will receive a, a tracker code. They need to download and, and configure uh, a, a specific plugin for your software repository platform. Uh, and then uh, we will have um, an exchange of information between the repository manager and the open air uh, to confirm uh, that everything is uh, well installed and we can and we are already tracking the that information so we we start using um, so we are using um, uh, matomo uh, that uh, is the current uh, software of the pwiki so we, in the in all our tests and in all our developments we did it in pwiki now pwiki's um, software have a different name matomo so we this is the way it works how to join in the in the services that we we have available um or uh, if you if you have already um a socialite endpoint uh, as is the case for um, uh, repositories from uk for example that are integrated in the iros uk service we can collect also the, the, the user statistics via this, uh, this um, service. So we have two ways to collect user statistics and we show all in an integrated view in the, dash, in the dashboard. So I will also demo this part. And the last um, novelty is something that um, lots of repository managers have asked it, is the, the, the collection um, uh, monitor uh, that provides the, um, the aggregation the aggregation history uh, and this is something really important to, to open air be more transparent uh, and to the repository manager be aware of uh, when was the last time that uh, our content was um, uh, was harvested and transformed into what is the date of the, that content that open air is, is showing in the, uh, in the in the different services and of course in publicly available in the explore service so um, I will now uh, do um, a demo but let's let me check if we have any urgent question here so um, I've already shared the slides so Garrett is asking uh, so Garrett is asking about the fact that um, Let me think. Uh, let me check if I understand. There appears to be a shift away from harvesting metadata that must link back to open repository content to a more inclusive approach. Harvesting metadata from a range of resources. 
Does this mean that open air will accommodate the harvesting of metadata on only records from the institution? Or... Um, so I, I'm not sure, Garrett, if you are asking only about the dashboard. So uh, open air. Uh, so can aggregate content from different kinds of content providers. So as you know, uh, we start from repositories, but uh, we have um, uh, aggregators, mainly national aggregators um, from UK, from Holland, for example, from Netherlands um, uh, and others. Uh, then we have also um, other kinds of um, aggregators or directories where we collect content from DOAG, DOAJ for journals, um, uh, uh, this kind of so other um, uh, journals, platforms, institutional or, or thematic. Uh, so we have also that situation. So, and we um, uh, also want to collect from CRIS systems based on CRIS guidelines. We currently only collect from CRIS systems acting uh, in terms of OAI interface as, an, as a normal repository. So, for example, we have all the CRIS systems from uh, Denmark, but in fact, we are collecting the content from a, a, an OAI PMH interface that is like uh, a normal OIPMH interface of a repository, not collecting the, all the potential um, of a CRIS system. But this is what we are working with the EuroCRIS in order to have um, developments uh, in, in CRIS systems that align with our guidelines. Uh, um, now, uh, the, the, so having this explanation, so what I want to, to answer is that in uh, the dashboard, uh, the type of services that we provide is clear um, and is uh, really straightforward and useful for repository man managers currently. Uh, but uh, uh, now the next step is to uh, check with publishers the way that we can also provide these services, check with the uh, aggregators, managers, uh, the way that the dashboard will be also useful for them. Uh, we, we also have, uh, so they can update their information, but in terms of enrichments and, uh, and metrics, etc., we, we need to, to, to develop that also to have this like kind of um, user statistics hub. Uh, so there are some functionalities in the dashboard, some services available in the dashboard that are uh, so 100% uh, um, available and useful for repository managers, from literature to repository managers, uh, and not all other functionalities are available for all other kinds of content providers. Um, but this is what we want to develop, so to work directly with the different content providers to to find the ways to the different functionalities be also useful for them. Even for data, um, for data repositories, for data archives, we have already events that are also useful for them, links between data and publications, links between data and software that we want to deliver also via this, the enrichments events, uh, but th th that they are not currently available in the dashboard, so in a public way, but we, in fact, we are already playing with this kind of data in, in the broker, in the broker service. So I'm not sure if I answered your question, but maybe after the demo, I can, I can uh, um, explain better. So um, let me quickly uh, spend here like 10 minutes uh, demo the, um, uh, the the dashboard so let me so you need to of course uh, access the provide provide.openair.eu and then you need to sign in i will uh, do some explanations about the the login part because uh, some of you will have some issues in terms of login. 
but I will explain later. Uh, so you need to log in. I'm logging in with the, the University of Minho Repository Manager account. So here in the uh, in the home page we have we highlight some of the functionalities, and then you can navigate through the different functionalities via the menu, the top menu. So under the sources menu is where you can register it if you are not yet a, a, co a compatible repository or where we can update. Some of you, I suppose, uh, uh, a lot of you uh, want to update some information about your repository. So you can do it. So in terms of um, description, um, uh, email, admin email, uh, logo, etc. So you will see the data sources that you are managers. Uh, so here we are may have University of Minho. And then you can update uh, your information. So the official name or if you um, if you want to update uh, some specific name of your institution or the English name of your repository. E e here you can, for example, I know that some lots of people want to, to update the logo because the logo is not available in the in the public um, services of open air. So you can easily put a link and this will be shown in the different uh, services. Um, so that mini mile is something that people ask us a lot to also to change because when they have registered in open door long time ago, it was uh, an email from a person that, in fact, already don't work there <laughs> in the institution. So this kind of things happen. So people want to update. So you can now update this kind of information. And you can also, if you want to apply a new um, interface because you have you did a, an upgrade to your system or you did a, an upgrade to the compliance level of your repository, you, you can do it directly here and have a new interface. The compatibility is where we have available the, um, the validator. So uh, you can test, you can run a compatibility test. Uh, so these services have the same functionalities from the previous, um, the previous um, validator tool uh, that now is integrated in the dashboard. So you can run compatibility tests. Uh, you can check all your uh, tests uh, in the, um, sorry, in the validation history here. And the novelty that I show uh, in, the, in one of the, the previous slides, so is the collection monitor. You can check here in the compatibility, the collection monitor, your aggregation history. So I will check the compatibility, the, um, sorry, the, the aggregation history of uh, our repository here from University of Minha. And you have the last time that we have collected content so you have so an history you can see more results here at the end but you can see that um, um, you can see um, so uh, when we have collected uh, when we have aggregated the date and how many records that we have aggregated at this date how many records were transformed in open air in order to be uh, to appear uh, in the in our serve in our infrastructure, so you 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 have this. So the goal of Open Air is to do uh, this every two weeks. So currently, uh, what Open Air can can offer, uh, based on all the the work we do in terms of infrastructure, every two weeks we aggregate, every two weeks we transform. So uh, so we update the content every two weeks. Uh, and now with this aggregation story, I think it's clear for you. For you, when was the last time that we have collected content from your repository? Which I think is really important uh, for you. And uh, I know that lots of you have asked it for that. And then the the content part. So um, where we have the events. Uh, please be aware that we want to show additions and alerts, metadata alerts. If you have some um, errors in your metadata that we found when we collect, uh, when we have aggregated your content and transform it, like a, a language uh, 
um, not identify in the proper way, so um, this kind of thing. So uh, it will record without uh, publication date, these kind of things we can also report to you. Uh, but the, the enrichments here uh, now available are the, um, the only the metadata enrichments, so more and missing, and you can see now the more and the missing, so more. And the kinds of events that we have are, so projects, links to projects, that is something, oops, sorry, I didn't want to, to click. So uh, links to projects, um, uh, f funded projects, so from the funders that we have in the open air information space, PIDs, uh, open access versions, abstracts, uh, subjects, so we collect content from some uh, content providers that they have their um, thesaurus, their um, uh, specifically subject taxonomies, this kind of thing. So we, we have also this information. Some repositories also want to use subjects. It's, it's not um, the majority here as far as I, I know, but um, for some maybe this is useful information. Um, uh, but uh, but uh, which are the the enrichments that we think are really relevant for um, uh, the majority of the repository manager are the links for project projects because repositories uh, want to play an important role in terms of information systems for the national funders and for of course for the the European Commission and uh, this will. Uh, enrich the metadata of your records pids because we want you want to also to to have this kind of information and in open access versions for sure these are relevant i understand that is also important for example abstracts sometimes you don't have rec in your records uh, for example when when um, for that repositories that usually have um, self archive procedures um, sometimes the authors or the person in charge of um, deposit don't put the abstract and this is a way for you to to put more text to your records and to, to have a better visibility in the search engines so but you can also use this so um, I, I will not uh, so use the the demo the, the more uh, because I think it's more important to have the, the missing part but let's let's uh, let's see examples from the project now two examples uh, so um, um, so you, uh, I'm, uh, it's important to say that I'm looking now for all the events that OpenAir have generated uh, without filtering and things like that, okay? Then I will show how to filter and how to create a, a notification because it, it's, it's, so, uh, it's more useful for you to, to um, create notifications in order to, to have this, uh, this more, uh, this uh, in a better way. Uh, way and, and information more useful for you. So you will see the record, the, the record that we, we want to, to highlight. Let me show a good example from, um, let me try to find an, an interesting example where we have an European Commission project and the national project. So I'm only finding Portuguese. Okay, this is a good example, this record, okay. Um, so this is the the publication that we we are suggesting as a, an enrichment in terms of link for project, and here you have uh, in uh, like a green highlighted uh, you have the links for two two projects. So we found from another source or via inference uh, links to projects that we don't have in our repository in the in, in the metadata. So we found a link for a specific FCT project. FCT is the Portuguese funder that have all the projects since 2000 integrated in the open air infrastructure. And, and uh, the Portuguese repositories uh, need to put that information in the metadata records to comply with the, the funder mandate here in Portugal via our Portuguese network of repositories. And we have here the share prep and an FP7 project. So we have here links to two projects, one national and one European, 
which I think is a good example, is what I, I was trying to find an interesting example. So, and then uh, you can use this information. So you have access, you know which uh, record is yours. So we, you need to open your record and update uh, the record and put the links for these two, two projects. So, and, and also, um, uh, so if the information comes from another uh, repository, we, we show from so all these examples that we have here uh, comes from our own repository, which means that OpenAir found these links via uh, test mining. Okay, uh, so we don't have it in our metadata. Uh, OpenAir only have this record from our repository and uh, OpenAir found it via test mining. Sometimes uh, we have also here uh, other um, uh, repositories. Uh, and um, for example, this is a good example. Uh, so um, links for two projects from the National Funder. We have it in our repository, but uh, the, the, the repository also, the, the record also comes from PubMed Central. Maybe the links to this uh, funder were found in the metadata of PubMed Center or maybe via um, inference test mining. Okay, I think this is something that really people want to, 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 to use. So, yeah, a good question here in the chat. So, Jordan, thank you for your question. So, no, the answer is no. <laughs> uh, but we, we, I, I need to add something to the answer. Currently, no. Okay, this is what we want. So, so um, we were pushing to have this kind of information available in production, not to wait more and to delay more these services. So now we have this in production. Now, uh, for the um, uh, in the top <laughs> priorities in terms of um, new functionalities and uh, new. So additions to these services, this one is one of the those that we want. So we want to provide this in uh, so a CSV uh, file, um, uh, not via the 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 bulk events, but via the, the notification. So I, I will show you. So when you, when you filter, you create a notification. For example, you want all the projects all the links to projects from publications from last two years. And uh, you will see in the notifications uh, here, you will see here in this area, the notifications. Um, and we want to put the events of that results of this subscription made by you and the, the CSV. This is what we want. And then uh, we are in a parallel. So this is what we can do quickly. So, but we don't have it, Jordan. Uh, but then also in terms of um, uh, so automatic functionalities, uh, we are also in a parallel uh, work. We are also trying to, to provide this information via SWORD also. So, but for this, I don't, I, I cannot say that we will do it quickly. For the CSV, yes, but uh, for the, the SWORD, so I'm not sure if we, we can uh, do that in the in the coming two three months, but uh, for the CSV, I know that we can, and we will do it. Okay, uh, so I just want to show also the open access version. For example, the events, the enrichment of open access versions. So, in fact, this first event is a good example. So we have the the, the, the this publication in open in our repository. We have a restricted. Ver restricted uh, version and um, in this repository DESI publication database they have an open access version of course now uh, this is not uh, so this is something that the repository manager need to define what to do with this information so this is not mandatory so you need to put this version so it depends of all the workflows that you, you have in place but this is useful. So uh, someone in charge of validating the content of the repository uh, uh, can open the version that they have here available, check if it's the same version, 
um, if it's different, uh, so you have different ways to proceed. So you can decide that uh, you just change the PDF or just change the version that you have and it's done. Or other repositories may be in their workflows, they need to contact the author who have deposited the publication in order to, to uh, ask him if you want to update the version. So it depends of the workflow that you have in place in your repository, but I think this kind of information is really useful for you. Um, okay, and then uh, you can you can um, let me you can I have the shot here in front of me. Okay, uh, you can work with the the filter part here. Okay. Um, let me just do um, uh, uh, a simple, a simple um, uh, oh good. A simple filter here by date, for example. We apply, so we have, I think, um, I'm not sure how many records we have, but uh, lots. Now we only have um, 19 in this filter. I did, I did a filter by date, but you can have filter by title, by author, by subject, um, and you can filter this. I think the, I will, I will, uh, I'm aware from the, all the tests that we did, so that, for example, for, for um, PIDs, for um, pro links to projects, people want to filter by date. For example, they only want to update the content uh, from the last two or three years or from the last five years when they think this is important in terms of funder mandate, these kind of things. Um, when So just for content uh, for um, Horizon 2020 projects, for example, that. Uh, just started after 2014, this kind of thing. So you can filter. And um, so you see all the events from a specific uh, type of event, missing or more. You check all the events that OpenAir offer for you. Then you, you do a filter if you want to do a filter, and then you subscribe. You can subscribe all the events that OpenAir suggests, or you can filter for a specific date or for a specific author, and you subscribe these events. Uh, you select the, f the frequency of the um, to receive this information. We have it by default this, but I must say that we can only provide at this stage a monthly update. <laughs> so even if you suggest real time or daily, we will not send you uh, this because we only generate in a monthly basis new events and we only send notifications monthly. Uh, maybe I will delete this. We will delete this from from these possibilities, but uh, because we want to have this in the future, but in fact we don't have it now. Um, oh, something that I forgot here to explain is the um, the trust of the the event. So there is from zero to 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 zero nine of um, of trust of the the quality of this event. Uh, of course, when we are talking about, uh, for for example, um, PIDs, so DOIs, so the trust is uh, zero nine. Uh, so if, if we, we found the DOI from your publication, we send it to you. But of course, when we are talking about links to projects, uh, this kind of things, uh, that comes from inference. We have a um, we have a possibility of of mistake. Of course, it's uh, generated by algorithms for test mining algorithms. So, so and uh, in our um, inference um, information system, we have a level of of trust so that we show here in the in the in the service. Okay, um, so you, you can also subscribe and uh, and um, uh, have here the the trust uh, level that you want to achieve. And you just subscribe this um, 
this event and all the events will be available in the content notifications so so here are the um, the events so you generate the new uh, I generated a new um, event in one month you will be you will have in one month or less depending of the of, of, of the time that you do this this uh, subscription but uh, in one month or less you will have um, events here available uh, so for example i have an example here from uh, enrich more open access versions and uh, we have a lot of course uh, because uh, more open access version is something that we we have a lot in terms of the the, the, the duplication the all the content that we receive in open air but missing it's more precise so you and then you manage all your notifications here in this area and to finish just to in one minute to highlight some things of the, the metrics so when you click in metrics if uh, for the majority of few of the content providers you will see your repository here and uh, it uh, and with a disable uh, link okay let me let me use another another account a personal account where i am acting as a, a repository manager of other repositories and I can show you that quickly. Sorry for that. So in metrics, the normal that you will see is um, uh, not enabled. Okay. So as you can see here, not enabled. So what you need to do is to click and enable the process. And then uh, you will have that information. Enabling in progress. As you see in this... Uh, oops, sorry. I just click here as you see this in this repository this other repository so when you click in enable uh, so you receive the I, I will not click for this repository okay but um, you receive the information how to proceed uh, all the instructions and then you click in enable uh, and then you will receive information about the tracker code and the, the plugin um, and the, um, the plugins uh, available for you to install. And then the way that you can interact with OpenAir to follow the, the, the right procedure. Okay. So you need to enable metrics. You receive instructions, a second step of instructions. And then you uh, can proceed following the instructions if you need help just use the help desk the we have a specific category for repository manager so just ask questions and we can help you in the in the installation process etc so i was just using another account just to show that as we have some uh, portuguese repositories that uh, are already involved in the um, in the pilot so they are already participating in the, uh, as is the case of the repository of the university of of um, of minho <coughs> so so metrics are enabled and and uh, you can see here so the views uh, the views and the downloads in our repository. This is what we can, of course, play, and we are talking about user statistics, okay? But we also have views in open air. So uh, the, the, rec the, the landing pages of the, the publications that we have in our repository and that we, we show in open air. So we have views in open air, views in our repository, and uh, downloads. Uh, so generic uh, statistics and graphics, but then you can uh, get um, uh, user statistics reports. So the different kinds of um, um, reports uh, that we, we have available. So you can just 
apply for a, a specific report um, you need to to fill all the the needed fields in terms of um, report um, filters and attributes and you will get a, a report so this is something really relevant so uh, this is something that we want to provide uh, uh, in the in a quality way so we have um, of course what we have now is not uh, is not enough data because we play with uh, like 30 i'm not sure 30 to 35 repositories pilots we want to have uh, more so a big number of repositories using these services in order to to put it uh, better uh, but uh, this is a reliable service that use all the um, the the standards um, uh, uh, so we can we can provide more information about the metric services in another webinar or you have information also in the, the, in the the open air portal to detail all the the rules that we have in this in this service the, the counter um the the way that we 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 have so we don't have information from robots etc so but to, this is a reliable services that need to have more users and then uh, together in a in a network and uh, we will uh, achieve to have a good statistic service to to that is important to an open scholar scholarship uh, system. Okay, I'm not sure if I have more questions here. Let me just come back to the, the slides. So we have five minutes to conclude this, um, this webinar. Please just put your questions. If you have any questions, uh, just, just ask. Um, I, I just want to to highlight two things that um, uh, if you can if you can check so those repository managers that are participating in this webinar i would like to have a feedback from you in the chat if you have uh, if you um, uh, were seed in terms of login and see the the events of your of your repository, please test. Go to provide.openair.eu. Do do login. Login you do with your account that you have used in the validator. If you don't remember the the login or the password, just ask. You will receive via email the login, and then you can ask the password. And at the end, you have uh, you have access. So. Um, if you, you if you are not sure that you have already registered, uh, but so if you your repository is here, you have a login. By default, you have a login based on the on the email used in the login uh, when you have registered for the first time. So if you don't know, try to to ask for the login via the email or via and ask for the password. Um, uh, at the end. If you don't find it, uh, just contact us. So there is, we know that the problem of, of this service uh, will be the login, the login, we will have some login issues. So to access the the, uh, the system. Okay, Yadranka is already saying that I'm registered, but I don't see events. So uh, I suppose that the login associated to your repository is another one. But so just contact us. So you can, if you don't see this, just uh, put here in the chat. Uh, so my colleague Andre is here with me in this webinar. Uh, we have um, the information of all the logins associated to each content provider. So if you don't see events after you log in, is this means that. Uh, it's an it, the, your content provider is associated to another login that manages your repository. So just contact us; we will solve this this in, in a few hours. Okay. Um, this is the type of things that we will have. So use the the help desk, or uh, in the coming days, as we are doing this webinar, just use just contact us directly. So my colleague Andrea will solve all the all the issues related with this. So, 
and then we will manage that okay you you cannot use your personal login if some if to register your repository two years five years ago you have used the admin email of your repository or unfortunately a login from a person that have already that is already not working with you <laughs> there so just contact us if you cannot see events or you cannot see your data source associated to your login then we will solve that quickly um, then the last uh, f remark is about uh, events so of course the the all the enrichments that we have available for you comes from different processes that we have in our infrastructure from the, the duplication and inference there are a possibility of error if you found some that are errors just send us that information this is really important because um, we have a, 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 so we manage like a blacklist of um, wrong events and we will populate that blacklist of wrong events and uh, the, this will then these events that were reported as, as wrong uh, enrichments will not appear in the next um, update of, of, of the broker uh, service so this is something really important for us uh, that we can have your your feedback also because this is a two ways um, dashboard so because of the fact that you are a contributing of open air you can use the results the added value services available in the dashboard and because we have added value services for you we want our, our your feedback also to to improve this and the last thing is um something that i am realizing when i do some presentations with for specifically with some repositories i i i went for example last week to to santander in spain where i did a presentation there and i i took that opportunity to also to to have a meeting with the repository managers and they realized that they have um, they they didn't have problems to access to, to access the, the dashboard they have different events that they are really help that they're really happy to to have them that will improve the quality of the metadata that they have so open access versions links to projects but they they don't have so many as they expect to have and then i i conclude that uh, is due to the fact that we don't have their the, the full text of um, the records of that specific repository from University of Cantabria. Uh, so if you think that you don't have so many events that uh, as you expect it to have, uh, for example, links to projects, as something that you should expect, if you have like more than 10,000 records, articles, and you have a good number of projects uh, in, your, in your institution, you should expect to have a good number of events if you have only 10 or 11 please contact us because maybe we don't have uh, the we, d we didn't have collect your pdfs okay uh, as you know, as we know we only want your pdfs to test mining procedures to inference so we don't show your pdf in our infrastructure when someone clicks in the link clicks in the link of a publication in open air we always link to the to the original data source, so we don't show the PDFs in our infrastructure. But we need we need all the full text from your records to uh, to increase the potential of our infrastructure and to provide you added value services. So if you think that the events are not enough, just contact us via um, you can contact us directly, Pedro or Andre, or via help desk. And together with our colleagues from University of Bielefeld that are in charge of the aggregation process, we will um, see if you, you have, we have your full text and what we need to do in order to, to start collecting your, your, your PDFs, your full text. Okay? This is something really important. Uh, okay, uh, so if you have any other question uh, please put here in the chat so i think i'm i'm done in terms of uh, webinars so yadrank have also um, um, a question here about the the noads this is something important 
So currently, um, this is something important, Yadrank, yeah, that you are asking if the nodes can have access to the um, to the information of each repository. So um, using the dashboard facility, uh, I will say no, and, and, and no for the future also, <laughs> but uh, but not because uh, I don't think is uh, the information is needed for you as a nomad. So if you want to 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 uh, to be um, an open air national open access desk so that providing support to at the national level to repository managers you need to have access to this information and it's important to have access to this information open air uh, technical coordination needs to provide you access via a different area so i have the idea of creating a um, a dashboard for nodes where we can play with different kind of information and we provide you so we can provide you a day in a dashboard for nodes useful information from the dashboards so this is what we we, we can do uh, another additional answer for this is related with the multi multi user of a dashboard so now we only have one uh, login account that is the manager of that repository that have access to the dashboard so for the next uh, version i am not sure if we can do it in the version 2 where we want to have some uh, minimal uh, updates like the csv file etc from the events uh, but maybe in the version 3 we, we want to have the multi user functionality where different users have access to the dashboard to manage the repository this is something that is really useful for um, so for um, big universities that uh, different uh, that we have different managers in different faculties these kind of things that people want to access the information to to, to improve that and in this multi user um, uh, environment maybe the dashboard manager maybe the the manager can provide you access also uh, in a login so you can be in touch with a specific repository, ask as a NOAD to have access and they provide you access. But we want to provide this information internally in OpenAir via the dashboard. So uh, I have a Portuguese repository manager asking also a question here, if the, the changes that they do in the record will be reflected automatically in OpenAir. Um, the question was was in Portuguese, so from Clarice, thank you for this question. Um, so uh, not automatically, uh, because Open Air only harvest every two weeks. But when we harvest, we transform the record and we update the index. The index, then it, it will be available. If you do the changes today, and we will um, aggregate the content in two weeks only in two weeks but if you do the changes today and we start the aggregation process next monday you will see by wednesday when we do update the index the index so um, now you have the possibility to follow the um, the collection monitor the aggregation history and this is clear for you Clarice. so you see the last uh, transformation date it means that the the next day we have an update of the index so you can you can see the changes that you have made to that record will appear in open air in that day and those changes will be reflected in the next uh, broker service events update okay for example if you do links to projects today then the at the end of the month uh, the broker service will generate a new set of uh, events and then the links to this project that we have already updated the, the metadata will not appear so yeah we have already passed the time but um, i'm not sure if i miss any question no so thank you all for your participation do you have any other question if not we can finish this i will be available one minute more here if you have any other question, uh, Garrett, if you want to have um, a specific contact with with us, just send an email. Or just chat with us uh, if the question, if I didn't answer properly the, the question. 
uh, Jordan, thank you for your question. It's really important, uh, this type of thing. So um, I know that when we receive, uh, like when we see 1,000 events or 2,000 events, so we don't want to do it manually. So we want to have automatic procedures for that. But even using filtered notifications, you can have less number of events. But yes, we want to improve this, the way that we interact with repository managers and provide tools in another way, not only manually. Um, okay, thank you. I hope that um, this webinar was useful. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, please test uh, right now or just after this webinar um, your repository, uh, your access to the dashboard. If you don't have access to the dashboard, just send an email to Andre. Okay, Andre or Pedro, but Andre will answer. Um, and many thanks for your for your participation here. The records will the recording of this session will be available soon. We will send an email for all the participants via. Um, uh, so we will send the recording link and the slides via email. Thank you for your participation.